Hey, so I was uh, fortunate enough to get my hands on a pre-sale Mishimoto Performance XJ Radiator. And uh, I've had it for about a month now. The question is, does it meet the claims by Mishimoto? I took the whole month of uh, trying to kill this thing, trying to overheat my motor, did everything I could to, uh, to put it to the test. And I can really, I can report back and say it, it's been very good compared to what I had previously. I'm not going to waste time with uh, showing how to install a radiator. There's plenty of guys out there who has videos on how to do that. So, um, so a couple things. You know, I live in Arizona. I uh, tow a lot with my Jeep, and um, living in Arizona, it puts it to the test quite often. So. Um, if, uh, if you really want to see some, some good pictures, you go on Mishimoto's website. They've got some nice photos all around the radiator. And I can tell you um, what you get is what you see in that photo. It's very nicely well welded, quality packaging, and the thing is huge compared to stock. It is very wide. A um, couple things about my Jeep, what I previously was running. I had a Napa Spectra OEM um, the heavy duty version of their radiator. Uh, I have uh, 33 inch tires, four and a half inch lift, running 456 gears, heavy bumpers, winches, you know, tools, and everything else you have. And um, I have tried using the CSF 3 row previously. I've had other stock radiators. I've, um, I have right now the OEM Mopar fan clutch in, also the OEM 195. Uh, degree thermostat that's Mopar as well and both of these um, are are less than a month old uh, I put in about a month before I put this radiator in. I do yearly flushes as well um, problems I was having previously was you know anything over 85 degrees or 90 degrees running the AC I was running hot it would be running 230 I would have to shut the AC off I don't. I don't have an issue there. The winch is not covering. I mean, it is it is buried in my bumper. It's not. Ha it's a not a blocking issue with that. Um, AC in stop and go traffic, it would creep up, and I'd be running 225, and I'd have to shut it off. Frequently, I would hit temperatures of 235 degrees, which is not good. And that's you know that's confirmed using both you know the gauge as well as the o o an OBD2 scanner. Um, so it was really bugging me, and I was on that you know trying to figure out what I can do to get this thing to run cooler and not have to sit there and stare at the temp gauge everything every time I drove it um, as far as install issues Mishimoto says that this will fit stock and it does I uh, had no problems at all the only thing I had to use with there was their supplied brackets for the AC condenser other than that it fit perfect I'm very happy with it um, it does come with a 19 pound cap which is not really, it's not standard for a Jeep, the size as far as that goes. There are aftermarket caps you can pick up at an auto parts store, but um, my recommendation would be to get a second cap and just have it in your vehicle because, you know, when a radiator cap goes, you're out in the middle of nowhere, you, it's kind of nice to have it. As far as how much fluid I got in it, um, 1.9 gallons. Uh, I was surprised how much it actually took. So what kind of results did I get after a month of testing? So I've been in uh, temperatures from, you know, 40 degrees in the morning to 100 degrees in the afternoon up in the high country at 7,000 feet down in the Phoenix area. Um, and, you know, wide range. The biggest difference I found was immediately in stop and go traffic with the AC on. Uh, it, it, in 95 degree weather, it is rock solid under 210 and I never had that before that was a pleasant surprise in fact getting off the freeway and coming up to a you know the, the light and waiting for it to turn the temperatures would drop it would sit there at 206 degrees and it's 95 degrees outside I never had that before if I got off the freeway previously it would it would creep up because it would already be warm it would have some heat soak it would seem like so that that was awesome to see that there's a big difference um, some of the testing with four people four mountain bikes on the roof and I, I don't know if you've ever had a bunch of bikes on your roof but it's a huge wind drag it's, and uh, I, I had overheating problems in the past with this radiator I did not have that 
The highest temp I, I saw with that really pushing it was about 215 to 216. Uh, it, it was, I wasn't concerned about that at all. Doing a hill climb, I don't know if you know Phoenix. Uh, if you're coming out of Phoenix, headed up I-17 North, there's about a six mile hill. It's probably about a 6% grade. Uh, you'll see a lot of cars pull over, overheating. Previously, I would hit down that hill quite often. I'd be running about two, I'd, I'd hit 236. Now, I can have five people in the Jeep, four bikes on the roof, AC running, and I have it floored, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hitting that hill at the top doing 70 something and it will it'll hit it might hit 225 that's it and it will it'll stay it, once it hits like 225 it is raw it just stays there it doesn't go up it and as soon as i top the hill it it drops very quickly and that i could not have done before i would have to shut my ac off going up that hill and or get the heater turned on to get the the good thing to cool down so that was a huge improvement um, coming out of the Verde Valley, there's about an 18 mile hill that goes up to Flagstaff. Um, that, that is, you know, it's got some, you know, five and six percent grades on that, not the whole way. In 80 degree weather, uh, it, it might get to 215 going up that hill, and that's with the air conditioning running. Couldn't do that before. So last week I did some uh, towing with a, towing a trailer. It was about uh, 1,500 pounds or so, uh, 90 degree plus weather, and temps stayed at 206 on the freeway. On the hill coming back up, um, it, it touched 218, but again, I'm, I'm running AC, you know, I had it floored and I topped the hill at 65. Couldn't have done that before. So my, you know, synopsis on this, I would say buy it. I mean, it, it, it does what they say it does. It, it works very well. It, um, it is definitely less expensive than some of the other brands like Griffith or I think Be Cool is one of them. Um, they make quality radiators as well. I, you know, I can't say or compare them. I've never run one of the Griffiths or similar, but I know some of those are running $700 plus. For the price point on, on this Mishimoto radiator, I, I think it's a, it's a good buy. I'm not racing my Jeep. You know, I, it's a daily driver. I use it everywhere for, you know, towing and so on. And it's been very good with this new radiator. Um, the one other thing I notice, if it does get over to over 210, as soon as you, you know, get over the hill or whatever it is, it drops much faster below, you know, back down to what the temp should be. So long term, I need to, you know, obviously it's only been in there a month. I can't, I can't say how good it is over a year or, you know, a year and a half. So, you know, obviously if there's an issue, I'm going to report it. You know, if there's, you know, something cracked or leaks or whatnot. Um, I, I think for now, though, I, I would say it's a good buy. Even at the, you know, full price. I think it's a little over 500 bucks is what they're listed, 560 or something like that. It, it's, it's, it's worth it. If you don't live in an area where it's, you know, 115 degrees sometimes, you know, maybe you don't need this radiator. But if you do any towing, uh, you live in a very hot environment, you like to use your AC, and you don't want to worry about overheating your motor, I would say this is a good buy.